Now it's time for more of Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hook up. Get ready for more of the best fishing information and the hottest tips on improving your angling skills. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup. Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. And by Rancho Leonero, where your wildest Baja dreams come true. And now, Southern California's sports fishing voice, the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray and rock god Rick Maxa. Welcome back, hour number two. Let's talk hookup on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here with Rock Cut Mac- Rick Max. So we're live at Mossy Ford in Pacific Beach. Easy to find. West of Mission Bay Drive, right off the I 5 here. And they're having, the, of course, the huge cellathon uh, here at Mossy Ford this weekend. And John is here. To talk about that. Good morning, John. Good, Good morning. You have a uh, you have a list of deals in front of you there. I see. Yeah, I, I, I already can't. talked about this 2016 F250 XL crew diesel four wheel drive for less than forty. Yeah, how how are you pulling off how a new that? diesel for less than forty? You know how do you grand? do that, right? right? Only at Mossy Ford, right here in Pacific Beach. A brand it's brand new crew cab four wheel drive Power Stroke, thirty nine thousand dollars. Wow. Under forty thousand dollars. Crazy. Now, is it the aluminum body, the uh, the new style? That's when the 2017 do... model that's coming out. That's, okay. That's being okay, built. Okay. So now. the F-150s are the aluminum body. The F-150s are yeah. all aluminum. Okay. An amazing truck. If you have not driven the new F-150, get down wow. here. We have over 170 F-Series vehicles in stock available to choose right here at Moss. Crazy. Wow. How is that, man? Yeah, yeah. It's like a yeah. huge inventory. We have, yeah, we have a few different lots that we hide the vehicles yeah. on. So <laughs> as you pull on to the dealership, I mean, rest assured, uh, over 600 vehicles available down here today. So if yeah, you want a uh, particular color, particular style, particular setup in whatever you want, you, a lot of times you have it right here. We absolutely have it. Yeah. Absolutely. That's cool. uh, Fusion this weekend. Ford has announced some great deals for the 4th of July weekend. Fusion, sign and drive. Now, when I say sign and drive, I mean you literally come in, sign your name, and drive away in the car with zero cash down. You can buy a brand new Fusion this morning for $159 a month. What? $159 a month. Delivers that vehicle. Again, sign and drive. And what are you getting fuel economy on that Fusion? Oh, you're going to get 30-plus miles per gallon out wow. of the Fusion. Uh, Such the a amenities are not. It's an SE model, so it has the alloy wheels and all the nice features inside the vehicle. It's an amazing car. Uh, Ford, like I said, they came out this weekend, and they said, we want to sell vehicles. The last one I'm going to plug, Ford Expedition. All right? Full-size SUV, four-wheel drive. Uh, amazing lineup for Ford, an amazing vehicle in the lineup. Now, a lot of people have 0%, right? You've heard 0% finance. Right. Sure. Okay, what's better than 0%? I don't think it gets better. I don't <laughs> see how it could. <laughs> Less right? than zero. They pay you. How about we take $10,000 off the vehicle and give you 0% finance? No Whoa! Wow. $10,000 off on expeditions this weekend, and you get 0% financing for five full years. And what? that's part of the... Weekend cellophon, right Fourth here at of July Mossy Ford. Yep, and, right. and that's a. Good. We always say the best time to buy a Ford car or truck is during the cellophons, and there's three a year. Absolutely, this is one of those three opportunities. This is one of those weekends. You need to take advantage of. Absolutely, right? and yeah. everything on the lot is on sale. Like I said, over 600 vehicles available. Sign and drive for $159 a month. Buy a brand new diesel truck for under forty thousand, or take ten thousand dollars off an expedition and walk away with zero percent financing. Uh, one of the cool things, uh, other than uh, Owen, your owner here, and Josh, the general manager, and you yourself, uh, there's fishermen here that work here. I met Patrick yesterday, who's a big I'm a kayak fisherman, right? I think oh, I. Oh yeah, he's yeah. Been, he's been trying to see. I just moved here a couple months ago, so he's trying <laughs> to get me out on Mission Bay, and he wants to take me fishing. Yeah. And so, and then he showed me his hands the other day, and they were chewed up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I said, well, okay, I'll try it. So I, I imagine I have a fishing ship or a yeah. fishing trip coming up here pretty soon. Don't go this weekend. No. Yeah. <laughs> a little crowded. Don't go. Yeah. Okay. It's a little crowded this weekend. But he drives a Fusion and puts that kayak right on top of the Fusion. Absolutely. In fact, it's a C-Max that he drives. That it's vehicle. Okay, this is going to blow your mind a little bit. That vehicle gets 100 miles per gallon. Whoa. A fuel. Economy. Wow. And you can still put a kayak on. You still put a kayak, and on that vehicle, you can get $4,000 in rebates and 0% financing. Get on. Wow. Out of here. Or you can lease it for about about $179 a month. Wow. So you could come in here, sign and drive a C-Max, 
100 miles per gallon. I'm going to say it again, 100 miles per gallon out of that vehicle. So it does exist, $179 a month. Wow. That's All right, John. Mozzie Ford is a place. How do you get it? How do you tell people to get here? You know, I just say you come down. If you're going to the beach, you're going to Pacific Beach, we're right on the way. Uh, if you're getting off the five, get off on Garnet and just uh, come right by the dealership. You can't miss us. Yeah, well, thanks for hosting us here. Awesome, you guys yeah. do a great Very job. Cool. We appreciate sure appreciate being, being, here. being here every Fourth of July weekend. It's become a, a regular for us. Oh, I, I appreciate I it. And Josh was explaining it to me yesterday, and I showed up this morning, and a great crowd, and, and I want to learn a little bit about fishing. So there we I'm go. I'm going to turn it back to you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, John. Thanks for coming down here. Time to find out what's biting. Really. Yeah, buddy. Let's do that. Well, it's time for the catch report in our fishdope.com report today. A sponsored part by Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. If you want the absolute finest fish processing while you wait from your local, your long range, or your private boat trip, it is Fisherman's Processing. And they have taken the San Diego processing business to all new levels with their superior service, superior product, and those killer innovations that only Fisherman's Processing does, like custom them booking, pre-booking your orders. They've got those killer tuna burgers, the best smoke and jerky around. There's nothing like Fisherman's Processing. You can friend them on Facebook at Fisherman's Processing, or for more details, check Fisherman'sProcessing.com. And we're going to start off that FishDope.com report up at Pacific Edge. Talk to the man, our private boater buddy, Captain Mark Wish, is on the line. What's up, Mark? Hey, good morning, Ricky. Good morning, Pete and guests. Well, I would have to say, guys, you know, and I've been doing this a while, that without a doubt, this past week for the end of June and first part of July, this time frame has to be one of the best weeks we've ever had in terms of variety, quality, quantity scattered around. It's just nothing short of staggering how much fish there is. So here's a few highlights for our holiday weekend, guys. Starting up north there, the northern Channel Islands, they've been uh, dealing with the weather, but it's backed off now. Lots of sea bass, lots of yellows around there on the bait grounds. Danny on Fish Dope Report there has got all that itemized for you at Catalina. Boat pressure is going to be a major issue this, on this holiday weekend, always is, but there's squid backside east and backside west, yellows and sea bass in the bait zones there, and there's been some big sea bass at Catalina. One of my customers called the other day looking for a sea bass flag. He had a 55 from the east end of the island there. That's a beauty. Whoa, that's a nice one. Yeah, and uh, there's been a few more like that around. There's some there's some good ones at Catalina. Clemente, very good fishing at both ends. Uh, Squid at both ends, even a little dab here and there on the front side. Good grade yellow sea bass and some huge halibut from the bait grounds in both the cove and around the back there. The kelp lines below the runway, off the dunes, all the way down to Eel Point there has been kind of the more more consistent areas. There, there are some good ones all scattered throughout there. Clemente's looking really good, guys. And then there's that offshore scene. It's just crazy how much tonnage, I'm talking major tonnage, a uh, bluefin and yellowfin tuna is around, and it's biting just enough to get everybody all fired up. I mean, it's not hardly biting good by any means yet, but I think that's coming. But there, I know of at least five bluefin this past week over 200 pounds, over 200 oh, pounds. Oh, real. Yeah. And congratulations to my friend Steve and the crew on the hammer yesterday. They they got down with it yet, but it taped out 225 right there on that 43 where a lot of those guys have been fishing. But uh, there's been a little shift in the pattern. You know, it's still biting the bigger poppers. In fact, we just got a new order of them, thank goodness. And uh, But it's starting to respond to the bait a little bit better. There's more kite fish, more slow troll bites, more hooked on, you know, while, while guys are fishing kelps for yellows. And it, it's just starting to get going. And along with all that bluefin and yellowfin, there's been a good number of Dorado caught for this time of year. It's just crazy they're here already, but they're seeing good schools and they're biting a little. And several marlin caught this past week. Guys, we got good weather, lots of fish, and a long weekend to take advantage. You're absolutely crazy if you don't go fishing right now. Hey, everybody. This is Captain Dwayne Diego, four-pack charter captain, here to talk to you about Parker Boats and the good folks at West Coast Marine. When it came time to start Pinnacle Sport Fishing and get my own boat, there was only one choice. I wanted a Parker, and there's a real good reason for it, the fishability and seaworthiness. I've been fishing on Parkers for years now, and I know the abuse they can take. Parker Marine builds a heavy-duty, industrial-strength boat, probably overbuilt, but that's what I need when we're out 12 hours a day, over 300 days a year, running charters. The guys at West Coast Marine built me one heck of a fishing boat. 
from the custom tower with steering and throttle controls to the backup bait pump system. My Parker 2520 XLD will deliver me to the fishing grounds reliably and safe. Take it from me. If you're ready for a new Parker at a fair, upfront, honest deal, you need to see Kevin Kelly at West Coast Marine, located at 1555 Newport Boulevard in Costa Mesa, or check them out and their inventory and information online at westcoastmarine.com. Imagine being home in the morning and fishing yellowtail and calicos at Cedros Island by the afternoon. Now you can with Cedros Adventures. Experience world-class yellowtail and calico fishing aboard comfortable pongas with local captains that know the island hotspots. Stay in Cedros Adventures' own private waterfront hotel and experience first-class meals and service with pickups in L.A., Orange, or San Diego County. You hop aboard a scheduled flight to Cedros Island to begin an incredible experience. Trips are all-inclusive and offer old-world hospitality and fantastic fishing. Cedros Adventures. Call 310-435 or check cedrosadventures.com for rates and more information. No matter the fishing conditions, count on the Seaguar family of fluorocarbon leader material to help you catch more fish. Fluoro Premier has a smaller diameter with the highest break strength. Plus, it is super soft. When bites are tough, tie on Fluoro Premier. Blue Label is tough as nails with incredible abrasion resistance and impact strength. And new Pink Label is the choice for tough light conditions, giving you a little more visibility for better line control. Pick up a spool of Seaguar at your favorite tackle dealer or visit Seaguar.com. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, Calstar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the Calstar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend Calstar at fine tackle stores everywhere. Get it all at Dana Landing in Mission Bay. It's truly the one-stop shop for a great day on the water. Looking for a fishing charter? Dana Landing had you covered with several boats, including the new Blackjack, perfect for two to four anglers, and the Impulse that will carry up to six anglers in comfort and style. Dana Landing has a huge tackle shop with everything you need to go fish bay bass, tuna, or marlin, plus expert anglers on staff to help. They even have Mexican and California fishing licenses and reel repair. The Deli at Dana Landing is a local's favorite with all the food, ice, and beverages you need. When it comes to freshwater tackle, East County Bait and Tackle is the spot for a great day on the lake. The ultimate in rods and reels, the latest freshwater lures and live bait. ECBT has a staff second to none when it comes to sharing their passion for fishing. ECBT is at the end of the 67 freeway on Maple View in Lakeside, and Dana Landing is right across from SeaWorld next to the Dana Launch Ramp in Mission Bay. Check DanaLanding.com for more details. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. We're having a fun time here at Mossy yeah. Ford. Yeah, indeed. It's a great time. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties, but uh, we're uh, getting them worked out as we go here, but we'll continue our catch report with Marcos from C4 Sport Fishing. Good morning, Marcos. I see you have technical difficulties right before you talk to me, huh? Yeah. Well, you know how it is. Oh, we're just waiting for you to come save the day. Yeah, give, giving uh, Rick some time to come up with some snappy comebacks here. <laughs> exactly. Well, fishing uh, slowed down a little bit here on some of these trips. Uh, San Diego, you know, fishing on those offshore trips, we're still seeing occasional tuna, yellowfin, Occasional blue fence and yellow tail, but it's got really tough out there. They're back to the islands today. Taking a look around, they'll be down there today and tomorrow. Hopefully, they get some good counts out of there. And he's still running seven days a week, and barring a few charges here and there. The half day trips, still a lot of rockfish on there, but they're definitely starting to see some more more life on there. Seeing some calico bass, and you know, not a lot in the counts like it's been for the last few years once that size limit went up. Catching lots of fish and letting them go, which is still fun fishing for sure there. So the half-day mornings, afternoons, we're running twilight seven days a week now, so you have some options there to come out. And it's a great trip if you just want to go out there, catch some fish, take the kids out, make sure they get something. You know, it's always fun to go out there and look for that big trophy bluefin, but sometimes it's nice to take the kids out and just catch fish all day. So definitely check those out. Those three-quarter days and half days running just about daily. Just check the schedule, seaforthlanding.com. Full schedule's up there. We also have the one days up there. Those guys, uh, they're looking around. We've had some good yellowtail fishing on there, bonita, bass. Some of those guys are going to go offshore, look around there. So it's kind of a, seems to be a little transition period here. They're definitely starting to see more life. The counts aren't really reflecting what's out there. So definitely, you know, keep an eye on the reports there. Listen, to, let's talk hook up, check the websites. Lots of good fishing to be had. The weather's pretty nice here. 
So check the website, seaforcelanding.com. Give us a call at the office, 619-224-3383. Lots of options for you guys, and it's just going to get better from here on out. Awesome. Great, great info. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Those twilight trips, are, it was always my favorite. Dad and I used to, all the time, it'd be hot in Lakeside, run down, go fish the evening, cool way to hang out and cool off and have some good fishes. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I love the twilight fishing at a Seaforth. Well, Marco's a great report, and I know we got some good weather coming and some good fishing. We appreciate a great report, and we'll look forward to hearing another one next Saturday. Uh, maybe we'll get lucky and have a celebrity sighting on the uh, twilight trip there with Rick and his dad. There you go. <laughs> Marcos, look forward to it, man. We'll talk to you next weekend. We'll talk to you then, guys. All right. Well, hey, let's find out what's going on in the northern Baja sector. We got our man, Rick Jensen from Sport Fishing Financials on the line. What's up, Rick? Hey, good morning, uh, Rick, Pete, and our bass fishing stars. <laughs> hey, uh, I think that uh, Todd's being a little bit modest with his title, the redneck surfer. Uh, I think a more appropriate title would be the redneck surfer that was working his way up through the ASB ranking. So he's uh, <laughs> a little bit more than just a redneck surfer there. No, thank you. And, uh, you know, as far as Northern Baja goes, there's some interesting information. That last weekend, for those who aren't aware, uh, Kona Pesca and Baja Aqua Farms decided to release 190 metric tons of their, of their netted bluefin tuna that was being set for grow out. And uh, just to give some people some perspective on those numbers, that's about it's less than one percent of their take of the quota. But at 80 pounds, that's about 5,000 fish released, and at 40 pounds, that's over 10,000 fish released. So, if they're going to be working that hard to net those fish, bring them into an area where it adds a hundred million dollars a year to the local economy, and decide to release those fish. There's obviously some pressure and some regulation, so for everybody there, you might want to look around, take a look over at Lewis, and think about CCA, and instead of going online and social media and, and bashing what CCA is doing, like I've seen last week over this new proposal to uh, eliminate bluefin fishing for the sport fishermen, maybe uh, pull up your, your bootstraps and go get involved and be part of CCA and see how we can help solve the problem and continue to be able to fish for bluefin tuna through some some channels that you know may be effective that you can get involved with good message so, there. so that you know that's that's really interesting to me that you know all that work and go ahead and release 190 metric tons of tuna what the heck's going on there but there's definitely a lot of pressure coming down the line so we better be prepared yeah, no no quit. Well, all good things, man. Good fishing going on and good information. We appreciate that, Rick, a bunch. If somebody wants to get involved, obviously with CCA, you can come in here, sign up, and those are great words. If somebody wants to get involved with you and have a, a fisherman that's on top of their finances and help you make more money, how do we find you at Sport Fishing Financial? Well, the best way is to come fishing with me. We've got trips all through Baja and out of Mission Bay with, uh, with several different opportunities. Give me a call in the office at 949-481-1807 or find me on the web at sportfishingfinancial.com. All right. Well, great info, Rick. Appreciate that. I know you spent a lot of time compiling uh, all the reports. It's not always the easiest thing to get information out of all the killer spots in northern Baja, but we sure appreciate the great info and appreciate you hanging out with us for uh, every weekend letting us know what's going on in the, uh, in the Baja. Yeah, the fishing is definitely good in Baja. You know, everywhere from, from Cedros with Jeff, where they're catching uh, even threshers on surface iron, San Quentin, Yellowtail are around, Bay of L.A., Bay TZ, Yellowtail are there, Ensenada, uh, fish up to 20 pounds. Gonzaga Bay, we had a couple friends down there, and they reported a little too hot to fish, but they had no problem jumping in the water with their spear fishing gear and seeing Yellowtail, Caprio, Grippler, all in the mix, and uh, had plenty for dinner each night, so... Fantastic. Give me a call well, anytime. Thanks, we have information and trips available throughout Baja and here in Southern California. Great, Rick. Appreciate that very much. Sport Fishing Financial, Rick Jensen. Appreciate that. We'll talk to you next Saturday. And we're okay, here guys. at Mossy 4. That wraps up our catch report. And uh, don't forget talking about the, all the great fishing here with Ty and Todd and Tony from San Marcos. Tony finished his casting. Tony, is still around? I think Tony from San Marcos is probably finishing up his cast so in the meantime we can jump into the phones we've got michael from san diego on the phones right now michael good morning welcome to let's talk hookup uh, good morning guys. how you guys doing hi michael good morning good morning hey i uh, i just real quick comment on that z bar i bought one for a san clemente kayak trip a couple weeks ago and i dropped it down just just to kind of get the line going there's a really nice guy to calico on the first one cast it out <laughs> nice. <laughs> 
a good start. Uh, nice school, fish swimming around, didn't know what it was, cast it into it, and caught a nice size video. So those things definitely work. Right Sweet. The reason I'm calling is it was out last week with a bunch of buddies kayak fishing in Zanigo Bay, and one of the guys down at the, uh, that, that, what's that, boat ramp um, club right there, he mentioned that there might be a ruling coming on down banning fishing in the San Diego Bay, making an MT and L A zone. You guys heard anything about that? Well, there's always a group trying to, anti-fishing group trying to do something to fishermen, and I've heard about things like that. Um, I, 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 do you guys know anything about that? I've heard nothing about yeah, it. So not I, San Diego Bay as a whole. I don't think that could even happen. Maybe yeah. sections of the bay at some point, but I can't even imagine the entire bay. Yeah, there were talk. There's, there's always somebody talking about right. some type <laughs> of a fishing ban, but that's why we need groups like CCA to keep on top of things and have a voice when people do try and take our rights to go fishing. Yeah, and that's why I want to call. It. I think if anybody knew, you guys might know. If they didn't know, it might be something to look into. Yeah, all right. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks very much for the call. Appreciate the heads up. Wayne is here from Point Loma. Wayne, there he is. So Thanks for coming down to Mossy Ford this morning, Wayne. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Just wanted to point out a great friend of this show on the front page of the sports section this morning, Scott Sherman, if you haven't seen him. Uh, on the front page, I don't know if Scott's here this morning, but I haven't seen him. But yeah, I saw he's, him. Uh, he's there at the at Padres' new Hall of Fame with Mike D. Ostensibly, I really think they're talking about which barber they go to. They seem to have <laughs> well, the same think, yeah. the same haircut. Or maybe they're talking fishing. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, that, that or his be. new Parker boat. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He hasn't taken me out on it yet, yeah. so I'm a little cranky with Scott. There you go. Hey, uh, you were talking about uh, bait fish and fishing Florida. I'll be fishing in the Keys for my annual trip in two weeks. And the bait fish we use down there um, is a pinfish. Are you familiar with pinfish? Pin, they have a little spot on them, right? Yeah, they're yep. yahoo big, and you, you pin them through the nose, and yeah. they work great. Yeah, another, uh, there's a lot of bait fish down there. Um, but we used to use those for snook uh, and tarpon, I believe, as well. But mainly for snook, we used to catch them. Yeah, my, my buddy down there just got a new flats boat, mm-hmm. so we're going to be going for permit. Nice. Yes, nice. We just got a whole bunch last week. Nice. Big ones. That's yeah, awesome. I, I, there's a yeah. lot of things I miss about Florida. If we can make a hybrid of Florida and California, I know we could sell real estate. There you go. <laughs> so, did you do a lot of ocean fishing in, in Florida? I did everything. I just love fishing, you know. Yeah. Uh, one thing I never really did get into was billfish. My brother actually does billfish tournaments back there, but, um, I, you know, I'm not a big guy and I don't want to tangle with those guys. I'll stick to the freshwater and the calicos. Yeah. Now, do you make your living in the freshwater bass arena? Is that how you I wouldn't you're? Say, I wouldn't say I've made my living. I've made some, uh, some good incremental income through the fishing uh-huh. so far. I've just launched a guide service in March, which is uh, starting to, to g- g- uh, gain steam as well. Here and in Southern California? Here in Southern California. Okay. Yeah, all the San Diego lakes as well as uh, Lake Paris and Skinner and, and Diamond Valley. Um, but for me, you know, it's, you know, there's a lot of people that um, there's, there's a lot of ways you can go in life. And for me, I just enjoy life and uh, pursue my passion. So far, I've been blessed to make a living surfing. And uh, hopefully one day I'll make a living just doing fishing because uh, that's what I love to do. That's cool. Well, you're headed that way. Yeah. Doing I'm, the right I'm stuff. trying. Th- thanks, guys. Thanks, and, Wayne. And thanks for the lure today because I'll be giving it to my friend. He does the offshore trolling in the Atlantic down there. So that'll be great you for You read one of those, awesome. Yeah, I did. You Thank that's you. Cool, thanks, Wayne, for coming down. Enjoy to Florida. Florida. Let's head up to Alaska again. Our first report of the season from Jeff Top at Katmai Lodge, which is where I'll be next week. Right, th- One week from today. Nice. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, fellas. It's been too long. How are we doing? Hey, doing terrific. You're just starting your Katmai Lodge season there up on the Alagnac River, a very remote place. And I know you're calling from a satellite phone. What's going on? Are we going to catch some fish next week? Oh, man. I'll tell you what. We uh, we just had our first good push of sockeye yesterday. All the people that went out fishing got limits. Uh, we were cleaning fish, vacuum sealing fish. The, the camp was glowing. We needed it. Yeah, it was a little late, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it's always within a couple of days, but you know, a few days beforehand, everybody gets so nervous because they're so excited to see them, you know. And and it happened yesterday, so life's good. And uh, you know, too, the the trout fishing has just been off the hook good this spring. If there's anybody that listens to you guys that wants to see some amazing topwater stuff. We got it, man. It's happening right now. All right. Cool. So when our group comes up a week from today, what are we going to be looking at, Jeff? 
Well, we're going to have sockeyes. We're going to have kings. Um, and both both are in the river running now, so it should be full on peak time for your guys up there. And then we're going to have uh, we have some really good trout and grayling fishing. You know, with with our salmon just starting, it, it hasn't kind of affected our trout as far as changing methods and that. We'll have some mousing and leeching and you know and uh, and you know and our salmon should be just. I mean, the river should be teeming with them. It should your timing couldn't be any better. Oh, fantastic. Well, we're looking forward to it. We're here doing a live broadcast, of course, giving away that opportunity next year to come up to Katmai Lodge. But I know, I was talking to Dave, and there are a few openings this year to come up to Katmai and get up there and see you guys in that incredible Alaskan wilderness. Uh, you, have a, you have a phone number where we can reach you? I know Katmai.com is a great website for all the information, but uh, uh, you have a phone number there? You bet. Uh, we do. It's one uh, 800 800- Three three zero zero three two six, and uh, catmy dot com is really the best way. And and you know what, too, Pete, is I know you've been up here before, and and, and you're what, one of the neat things around the lodge here. What's going on is you know we've done a lot of really cool remodeling. You know, wait till you see the dining room, and you know it's just it, it, we've done a lot of neat upgrades with the lodge, and it's it's just killer right now, man. It's as nice as I've ever seen it in twenty years of being up here. That's wow, awesome. I'm, cool. so, I'm so excited. Can't wait to see you next Saturday, Jeff. And, we'll, of course, Ricky will be talking to you on the phone from the studio next Saturday before we arrive. Well, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to seeing you too, Pete. And uh, safe travels, and we'll see you next week. All right, thanks very much. Jeff Top from Katmai Lodge. And, again, uh, if you come down here to Mossy Ford, you have a chance to go see Jeff next July with us, which is pretty cool. How crazy yeah, is that? it's an awesome place. Very it cool. It really is. Very excited about that trip. Let's go ahead. And uh, Dave Myers is here. Dave, come on up to the mic. Mm-hmm. What's up, Dave? Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thanks a lot for having another great event, as always. Thank you. Step couple, up right to the uh, mic there. Quick question. Get right up there. there what do you go. guys think of uh, a couple of Dorado being caught already? And did you guys hear of anything about a rumor of a Wahoo sighting yet? I, both. I mean, I, I think that that's awesome. You know, it shows such good sign for our offshore season continuing that that Dorado is already up here. It, it was We fished on Wednesday this week and just kind of blown away after spending a week up in Sitka, first day getting back offshore again, and it was 70-degree water everywhere we went. I mean, it, it's beautiful conditions and purple-blue and all the baits there. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I just think that bodes so well for that offshore fishing and, and really good for the guys, just kelp paddy fishing in general. You know, the, the bluefin thing is so exciting, and it, it, it's worthy of going because you've got a shot at catching a 200-pounder. I mean, a true fish of a lifetime, but having having some filler in the back pocket's never a bad deal either. So really cool that, that uh, we've got the option of having good kelp paddy fishing in the Dorado. And, and yeah, I mean, the... That, that's what happens on warm water years. Until we catch one, it's hard to put your finger on it, but there's definitely the, the rumor mill around the tackle shop flies all the time about this guy was in the water diving on a bluefin school and saw a wahoo swim by, and this support boat supposedly saw one on a kelp paddy. So until there's a picture of one hanging on the deck, they're just going to be rumors. But I can assure you the rumors have been flying all week at the tackle store about people already seeing wahoos. So who right. knows? Very good. Well, it's thanks exciting. for coming down to Mossy Ford. Appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. much. All right, let's go ahead and jump on the phones, Rick. You got it, man. How about this time we talked to Paul? He's calling us from Ventura this morning. Paul, good morning. Thanks for joining us on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, guys. Great show once again. Thanks, Paul. Hey, uh, I'm going up to uh, watch off the coast of Washington here in a couple of weeks. I'm going to stay at Whigby Island. Cool. And uh, I understand there's good shore fishing for salmon. So the reason for my call is... Um, what kind of tackle do I need to take with me? What's my line set up? What's the bait situation? You guys know anything about that? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd use like a spin caster off the, off the beach there and throw um, like a, a like a, a, a crocodile yeah. or, or a colt sniper. I know I caught one on a live deception jig, one of the Ahi live deception jigs last week up in Sitka. And so throw something that looks like a bait fish. All that dart-style jig, whether it be one of those live deceptions or a colt sniper or a small flat fall, w- would be what is going to get a lot of your bites. And it's the same thing for the rock fish and things like that. I mean, you're, I, think, yeah, I think you nailed it. Yeah, there you go. Have a great time. Thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Harry is here from La Jolla. Hi, Harry. What's up, Harry? Howdy. Um, I happen to have the good fortune of being able to go down to El Salto and fish the bass down there. Um, as you well know, there are numbers. And what happens is the fellows that fish down, they're always looking for their personal best, the high. Is there any way when you are 
getting small fish, is there any way of figuring out where the larger ones are? Are they positioned differently? And is there anything you can do specifically to go for the big fish as opposed to the smaller ones? Well, first off, I hope to get down there one day. For me, that's the uh, I refer to it as the Tavarua of bass fishing. <laughs> Tavarua, Tavarua is the best place to go surfing for me, and, and I definitely want to get down there for bass fishing. A friend of mine was just down there a week ago. They got him good on crankbaits. Uh, the biggest of the camp at the time was a nine-pounder, which isn't giant for down there, but, uh, it, you know, it was a good one. And um, any time, if, if you want to target big fish, it's kind of, it, it, it's a bit cliche, but it's true to some extent, big baits. You know, you, you don't want to go anything smaller than, say, a 10-inch worm and even up to, say, a 13-inch worm um, if you're fishing plastics. And then big swim baits, big top water. Um, that's going to increase. You're going to get a lot less bites. You might not get any bites, but when you do, it's generally going to be a big one. And uh, you'll still get two-pounders on those, believe it or not. But, you know, it, it, it's also possible to get giants on small baits. But if you want to increase your, your odds on a big one, go bigger. Okay. I fished with Jim Boschin, uh two weeks ago down there. And uh, his crankbait was a real big crankbait, and he was catching big fish. And I had a smaller crankbait that I could handle, and I was catching the smaller ones. So what you just said makes a lot of sense, the bigger the, the, bigger the bait. Yeah, right. yeah. Even even uh, you know, it's just profile. So whether it's a square bill, just a, the biggest square bill bill you can find. If they're deep and you want to throw, you know, a, a big old, you know, one that's sometimes as big as your hands, you know, and and uh, those big ones will eat it. Because you know, I, I haven't been down there, like I said, but there's a ton of tilapia. So anything you can kind of mimic those big tilapia, you're probably going to uh, increase your odds. On the surface fishing, if you're catching smaller fish, do the larger fish locate themselves a little differently, either deeper to the to the side or it depends there there are occasions and it's probably very similar in the in the salt world too that you have to go through numbers to get those big ones but then there's other times where if you're catching small ones you either need to move or you need to change baits and it's just it's it's uh you know time on the water that will tell you those different things but um you just got to kind of figure it out down there but i again to increase your odds and target those big ones just go big on the baits big fish are looking i i will offer that big fish are looking for an easy meal a big easy meal uh when other fish when there's a you know hordes of fish fighting for some bait they're probably just hanging out watching they may be under those fish and pick off the fish that are swimming down if they're if they're doing that or if they're by themselves behind a rock they're just watch waiting for something to just slowly come by and just grab it and ease back in the rock as opposed to fighting with other fish for it they like that easy, big meal, if you think in those terms. Good. Well, thank you. Good info. For sure. Yeah. Have yeah, a blast down there. Ty, yeah. I, I got a question for Ty. It seems like, as of lately, there's maybe you guys have been fishing it for a long time, and the word is just getting out. But in the whole calico world, it seems like there's a lot more guys fishing real big hard baits, like big big jerk baits and things like that. Is that something that's new, or is that something that the word is just finally getting out? I don't know that it's relatively new. I, I think a lot of it actually has to do with the crossover from freshwater. Uh, a lot of freshwater guys, are, such as Todd, are coming in and fishing saltwater because uh, it's a lot of fun. And uh, they've been fishing the big hard swim baits for, for longer than we have probably. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's become very popular, and you probably are seeing more of it and will see more of it uh, uh, it's a good way to catch big fish, bottom line, when you're big fish hunting. Same gear as you would fish traditional swim baits and leadheads and that kind of thing? Or does your gear have to change? The gear is fairly similar for fishing the big swim baits. Um, definitely different for fishing finesse type stuff. You can't really finesse calicos or finesse fish them very much. You need heavier line. I mean, the go-to uh, go to line is, is 40-pound fluorocarbon for uh, calicos, where for, for freshwater fish, I mean, He's, he's caught, I think, a 12-pound fish on five-pound test or something of that nature, right? So I, I learned the hard way on pound, <laughs> yeah. on pound test. Uh, wow. you, Eugene Roberts took me fishing out of, uh, just local, up, up out of uh, Salt Creek. I was throwing a, a little I'm a jerk bait. He goes, what, what pound test are you throwing that on? I said 12. He kind of he goes, I don't, I don't think that's going to work too well for you. <laughs> I got one. It was a decent one, about a three-pounder. And I said, oh, I should have taken, taken a picture of that and showed my buddy because, you know, he, he works with I'm a. And uh, I go, I'll do it on the next one. I set the hook, pow, there goes that bait, and I haven't been back to 12-pound test. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I had a friend from Florida, too, down at Cedros. He came out to vacation and fished Cedros with me, and 
and he insisted on fishing a pretty flimsy light rod, right? Because that's what they're doing in Florida. Don't tell me what to fish. Oh, oh, yeah. And, and w- before long, he hooked a seven pounder and snapped my rod immediately. Oh. And I was like, I don't, I didn't care. It's just funny, you know. But uh, it's it's very different. It's it, it, it's a it's a heavier game fishing yeah. for calicos. There's no doubt about it. It's changed a lot. Where we used to fish twelve pound, now we fish. 50 pounds. Oh, that's a fact because yeah. you can, and a lot of guys yeah. are fishing straight braid. I fish straight braid sometimes on hard baits and sometimes on plastics, too. The disadvantage with straight braid is uh, big calicos do have pretty grindy teeth compared to others, and, and uh, they can not necessarily grind you off on that particular catch, but the next one or the next one, then, you know, you have the big one, and then there it goes, it breaks. Yeah. I think that's always been the theory that I've done with with big calico fishes. You don't necessarily need to be fishing a piece of 60 pound floor. You don't you don't need a piece of 60 pound fluorocarbon to to get your fish out. But you don't know when you're going to hook your nine or 10 pounder. If it was the first fish on a piece of fresh 20 pound, you'd probably be just fine. But if it's your 40th fish and that 20 pound is now worn down to 12 pound, and then you hook the one you've been fishing for all day, it just it goes away. But like you say, 40 pound or 50 pound or 60 pound, you know you've got. How often do you change that? How often do you change your, your floor top shot? Especially you guys are tournament fishing. Money's on the line. It's a big deal. You're really into it. How often do you change your I, I change mine frequently. Uh, I feel every time I feel I take my fingers, thumb and forefinger, run it up and down the line. If I feel any abrasion whatsoever, I'll change it. Any whatsoever. And sometimes after I catch a big fish, I'll just go ahead and change it, period. Um, yeah, you, you can't afford when you can't afford to lose a big fish. It does kind of change the game. Yeah, yeah. that's great info. Now and you mentioned uh, Cedros and Cedros. Our our August trip at Cedros Adventures. I just found out actually has three spots that just came available to go fishing with Ryan Christensen, our uh, casting master here. Uh, that's a uh, uh, late August, absolute prime time. What a place to go catch a big bass. I was just there uh, a week ago. Oh, uh, no way. Uh, I was down on the Shogun Skiff trip. And, oh, and, wow. And uh, we had we had John Amo Island. We had San Martin. We had Benito, Cedros. And uh, as far as numbers go, uh, Cedros was on fire. It was easily the best numbers place that we had along so the way. Cool. And it was it was darn good. We had an afternoon of... Two to five pounders. Uh, it, it was. We were tired of fishing. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's cool. Right. So if you want to go on that trip, late August with Ryan Christensen, uh, three spots left. Like I said, SedrosAdventures.com. Check it out well, and uh, book that trip. Throw, throw this in there too. Uh, I talked to Jeff last night on my oh, way okay. home from work, and uh, we had one spot. My trip's been sold out for a long time down there, and we had one guy that just. Uh, had a little family thing come up, so he had to bail. So there is, a, there is a spot on your on trip our, at the end trip. of this month. Correct. Yeah, at yeah. The a end of weeks. July. So, so if you if you want to go, go down hang out, and, Rick and you know we'll we'll catch calicos, we'll sip some pacificos, we'll have a yeah. great time doing the fishing thing. There's one spot that literally opened yesterday, and uh, I talked to Jeff on the way home. So I'd love to come fishing with you for sure. Sedrosadventures.com. Check it out. Bob and Santee. Bob, thanks for coming down to Mossy Ford. Appreciate you coming down here this morning. What's up, Bob? Good morning. Good morning. Quick question for you. When most of the tournaments that you fish, you probably fish the same lakes for the most part. But what do you do to to prepare yourself to fish lakes that you're unfamiliar with or, or haven't fished before? I'll start uh, well in advance, you know, just, just researching online. You know, go back and look at tournaments that have been won there in the past, whether it's – ideally you want to go, the, you know, look at the results from the same time of year you're going to fish there and then go through and read – what you know, what the winning baits were, et cetera, and a lot of that you got to take with a grain of salt because right. fishermen, we all know, hey, my fish was, I lost that ten pounder when in fact it was a two pounder. So, um, you, you know, that's that's how I'll start, and then when I get up there, I've already got a bit of a game plan going into it with the baits I've bought based on what I read. I'll call friends that have fished there as well, and then once you're on the water, though, it's up to you to start to dial it in. This is Captain Tim Ekstrom from the Long Range Vessel Royal Star. With my partners Randy Toussaint and Brian Sims, we have set the bar for the Long Range Fishing Experience. A spring 8-day, summer 5-day, or a fly-down, fly-back, 11-day winter trip, we deliver the highest quality Long Range voyage you will find. From our premium RSW fish storage to our top-of-the-line chefs and crew, Royal Star distinguishes itself from all others. Want to grab a spot on the Royal Star? Check us out at royalstarsportfishing.com or call Tracy at 619-224-4764. If you're not wearing and Maui Jim sunglasses. You're missing plenty. This is Captain Paul Hebert from the Wicked Pissa. Fact is, I wouldn't go fishing with any other sunglasses than Maui Jim. 
When I wear them, the ocean's true colors come shining through with more contrast and clarity. When it's time to harpoon a big bluefin, I see that fish clearly at that critical time. Maui Jim, seeing is believing. Take it from us on the Wicked Pisser. Try a pair at your local tackle shops or check out MauiJim.com. <laughs> What a tuna and yellowtail season last year. Many say the best in 30 years. Could this season be even better? Don't be caught without the right gear. Now is the time to stock up on the trolling lure that proved to be the best. X-Wrap Magnum by Rapala. Every X-Wrap Magnum runs perfect right out of the box. They all have extreme action and a controlled deep diving aggressive swimming motion. The large diving lip partners with premium VMC hooks and an irresistible rattle. The X-Wrap Magnum by Rapala can be trolled at high speeds without rolling or kicking out at depths to 15 feet. Bottom line, the x raft Magnum is the ultimate trolling lure for Southern California and Baja saltwater fishing. With a textured translucent body, internal holographic foil, and 3D holographic eye, x raft Magnums are irresistible to saltwater game fish. Available in a variety of colors and sizes. No matter what you choose, the fish can't resist x raft Magnum by Rapala. Ask your local tackle dealer which is the hottest color and size and start catching more fish. See the entire line at Rapala.com. If the fish are biting, I'm on my boat, rain or shine. Of course, I wear my life jacket. It's like wearing a seatbelt. Clip it on, grab my tackle box, and hit the water. Love California, boat California, save California. A message from California State Parks Division of Boating and Waterways. XSPRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. You're listening to the home of the 2016 All-Star Game. San Diego sports leader, the mighty 1090. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup uh, on the Mighty 1090. We're having a little technical difficulty here, still trying to get back on the uh, screen here. We're live at Mossy Ford in Pacific Beach, having a, a great time here, talking, fishing with the guys here at Mossy Ford. Ty Ponder, Todd Klein, having a good time uh, uh, talking bass fishing. Been a great show so far. We've got a great, great uh, live uh Giveaway going on right now. Tommy P can hear his voice booming in the background there, giving away a ton of great uh, APCO and Williamson and uh, other things. And I believe, Rick, are we back up there? We, we're uh, still working on it here. Of course, uh, our chief engineer uh, and uh, Dick are working diligently trying to get us back up on the air here. Uh, we're near the end of the casting contest, too, and I know Ryan's been out there working hard on the casting contest. Uh, getting uh, all, everybody qualified for that trip to Katmai Lodge on the electric line. And we're back. All right, we're back on the real line. Here. All right, well, back to it again with a, uh, a frustrating day with uh, technical issues, but they certainly happen, and we're back here live at Mossy Ford and ready to keep rolling. Yeah, indeed. Steve, you have a question. Go ahead. Yes, Go ahead, guys. Steve. Hi, good morning. Um, my question is crankbaits versus plastics. Um, not mentioning any brand names. What is your favorite? For fresh water? For no, 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 for salt water. Well, if it's salt water, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to my specialist next to me here, Ty Ponder. <laughs> well, there's there's all kinds of good ones. Is the bottom line that that swim well and work well. Uh, my particular favorite for plastics is is Corey Sandin with MC Swim Baits. He uh, makes them all by hand, each one, and uh, they're Corey's good, the best. Th- yeah, no doubt, no he's, doubt. He's the best to me, uh, and they they tend to. It's a wonderful combination of a good swimming action that holds up well. Sometimes it's a trade-off, but this is kind of a good combination of that. And what was your other classics you, you, and what? You were asking about hard baits, yeah? Right, crank baits, yeah. Uh, 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 you know what? It's, it's, Todd already said it. It's whatever they're biting that day. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and, and one of the most important things with crank baits is cadence and action. And it's finding out, you know, uh, one of my mentors, John Berling, he showed me one day. He, he had caught, I swear to you, it seemed like 50 really nice fish one day. And I wasn't getting bit. And he said, he showed me the difference in nuances and cadence and how fast you wind something or how often you stop it. Try little different things. Little things can make a big difference. That's my recommendation with crankbaits. Uh, if you're reeling a crankbait straight in, Try and feel your rod tip, and try and feel your rod tip, that sensitivity, when it gets the most sensitive action, and you're feeling it almost like a spinnerbait, like the blade on a spinnerbait. And when you feel the most action, all of a sudden you'll, you, you get bit. And then when you do get bit, 
be aware of what you were doing when you got bit and keep duplicating that, and it can make a big difference. When you wind in a uh, crankbait, do you wind in on a, on a bent rod or on a straight rod? Or? Uh, I tend to wind it at about a 45-degree angle and hold my rod up at about a 45-degree angle or maybe down. I like a little bit of bend in the rod because a crankbait can pull, pull out of a fish's mouth pretty easy when he bites it. A lot of time they're tail biting it. Might just bite it in the skin or something of the, of the mouth. But I like a little bit of action and a little bit more of a parabolic type of a bend in the rod on a crankbait rod. That'll allow the rod to let you feel what, what's happening when you talk about it, too. When you put the bend in the rod, you're using the sensitivity of the rod to be able to feel what your bait's doing. A Co- right. couple of things to add to what Ty said, too. When it comes down to the specific hard baits, there's subtleties where some will have a tight wobble, some will have more of a side-to-side. And if you have the luxury of having a partner out there with you fishing, you fish the one that's tight, he fishes the one that wobbles, and one day they're on this one, one day they're on that one. But that's how you can break down water quickly. If you're by yourself, you're on your own. But if you got two guys on a boat, three guys on a boat, fish different baits till you start to dial it in. And then once you got one, don't let Steve win the day. Go ahead and jump on his bait and take him out. What or, on the other hand, you can try and duplicate what he's doing exactly all day and not catch a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Which I've done, too. <laughs> that's a good call. Steve, thanks for Great coming all the way down. Ryan. Give us an update on the uh, casting contest here, Ryan. You have, you have an update for us? All right, Ryan's going to step up to the mic real quick. And while we do that, let's go ahead and draw for that pair of Maui Jim sunglasses. Rock God Rick's going to draw for Oh, even if, it, if you didn't get up to the mic, you're in here. All right. So winner of a brand-new pair of Piahi Maui Jim sunglasses going to Sean from Oceanside. Sean, congratulations. Right, you got Sean. a brand-new pair of Piahi. Congrats, man. All right. Ryan, what's the story on that? So that was a bit of a challenging one, actually. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? I saw a couple cars hooked. Yeah, a couple cars hooked, a couple trees hooked, but it's all good. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. uh, Game of chance and all that stuff. Yeah. We figured out the first Some winners and losers. And and now we got to figure out the third place. All right, very good, Ryan. Thanks a lot for doing that. Appreciate that. Okay, Cowboys got the random draw for... The qualifications to win that trip to Katmai Lodge and all those great things. Ty, let's go ahead and draw one of those out of there. Reach in there and draw. No, pull the open. Pull <laughs> open the box. Yeah, pull that open. Yeah, there I we go. I didn't know it opened. Yeah, right. Sorry, I was there going to right. go. All, all right. Good. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> and the winner of the third, the, the second the third qualifier is Rhonda is Gruber. Is Rhonda Gruber is potentially is going to Katmai Lodge. How cool, Rhonda! Congrats. Go to Katmai awesome. Lodge. Congratulations. Newly married Rhonda Gruber, I might add, with her husband there, Tom Gruber, a world famous guy there. And uh, I want to thank Mossy Ford from here in Pacific Beach again. They have that incredible cellophon going on this weekend, all weekend long. Uh, we want to thank them for hosting us once again. All the great people here at Mossy Ford again. This is the weekend to buy a car or a truck, and Mossy is the place right here in Mission Bay uh, up in Pacific Beach. Come on down. And uh, been a fantastic show with Ty and Todd. Thank you, guys. Todd, how do we follow you? I know you have a professional. You're a professional. You have a website and all that. How guide do we service. follow you? Yeah, I've got a guide service. And, uh, you know, I, I, I answer all the emails I get at ToddKleinFishing.com. If, you know, if we didn't answer any questions today or you didn't get a chance to uh, call in today, hit me up, ToddKleinFishing.com. Um, love to help you guys out. I, I love giving back, and, and you know that's what's been exciting about the guide service is uh, just seeing the excitement and, and putting smiles on people's just catching fish. Probably the feeling that Ty gets when he takes me fishing and seeing me smile. Yeah, and and uh, so again, uh, how do we find you if we want to go Todd, guiding? ToddKleinFishing.com. Spell uh, Klein for us. K L I N E. So it's T O D D dot K. ToddKlein dot uh, see, you got me confused now. Okay. ToddKleinFishing.com, and Todd it's, it's K-L-I-N-E. So, K-L-I-N-E. yeah, hit, hit me up. I'll, I'll figure out how to spell my All name. All right. Good luck on the tour <laughs> there. Awesome, you guys. Yeah. Ty, uh, uh, good luck with you. And you ever going to get TJ back on your boat? Uh, he's on the boat. All, <laughs> he's, he's on the boat, the boat all the time. Okay. Oh, yeah, he still loves fish. All right. You bet. All right. Good. You bet. All right. Congrats, you guys. Yeah, we wish you the best of luck throughout the season. Thanks for having us as well, guys. Thank you very much. And I want to thank the Cowboy and Tommy P., Thank you very much. Let's give them a big hand. Ryan here for the casting contest. Isaiah and Dick for more communications. And our buddy Adam in the Mighty 1090 studio. And most of all, all of you here for coming out to Mossy Ford this morning. Thank you very much for supporting Let's Talk Hookup. And we'll be back in the Mighty 1090 studios tomorrow morning, 7 and 9 a.m. It's just going to be me and Rick. Rick and I are the guests tomorrow morning. Uh, uh, we're going to open the phones and let you ask us pretty much anything you want to ask. Tomorrow morning, 
7 9 a.m. back in the Mighty 1090 studios. We'll see you right back here tomorrow morning.